Hi, this is Simon from HomeKit News, and this week we're looking at the Qingping Air Monitor Lite, a device with multiple sensors, including one for PM2.5, but also a carbon dioxide sensor. Now, what would you need one of those for? Keep watching to learn more. So here's our latest review product in very nice looking packaging, namely the Qingping Air Monitor Lite. And as you can see on the box, not only does this support Apple HomeKit, but it'll also work with the Mi Home app, although not at the same time, unfortunately. So as you may gather, this is a multi-sensor that can detect temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide and both PM2.5 and PM10. There's not a lot you can gather from the packaging itself, as nice as it is, even though we know what it's capable of, so let's have an unboxing and have a better look. Right off the bat is the device itself, which I'll just put to one side while I see what else there is. As this is mains powered as well as having a rechargeable battery, we've got a USB cable to power it, which I'm happy to report is USB-C. Excellent. There's also a manual in both Mandarin and English, and it's worth noting that there's a HomeKit QR code on the back, so don't go and throw it away without noting the number first. Onto the monitor itself, and luckily there's a second code on the bottom of the device, just in case you did throw the manual away. Next I'll go through all of its features in a bit more detail, but if you enjoy this video, do give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll first start with the back of the device which features an intake grille with a rather interesting shade of green. Now the back takes in the surrounding air and samples it for the various sensors. There's also a power button on the back which can turn either the whole unit off or just the screen. A USB-C port for power of course, and if you want to take the sensor with you, it also comes with a built-in battery that should last up to 7 hours on a full charge. The top of the device has a shallow groove that allows you to change which sensor data is displayed on the front simply by sliding your finger from one side to the other, or by pressing either of the dots found on each side. The front of the device is all display, which I'll get into more in a bit, but it's an OLED display which is very nice to have. There's also a colour LED strip at the top of the display, which I'll show you later. And in terms of the device and connections, it uses Bluetooth 5 for initial pairing with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi for connection. And despite its many sensors, it's quite small and compact at only 55mm high, 64mm wide and 46mm deep. Let's have a closer look at the display now, and as already mentioned, this is an OLED display, so even though there's a large border around the display itself, the rich black achieved with OLED makes it blend in very well. Now, the colour LED strip at the top changes colour depending on the particular sensor and its readings, and below that are five dots to show you where you are within the sensor order. The center shows the relevant metric in large numbers, in this case carbon dioxide, and at the top either side are icons for the Wi-Fi signal strength and battery levels. I'll now just give you a quick demo of the touch sensitive strip in action. So as you can see, sliding my finger along the groove changes what is displayed on the front, along with the LED strip showing the relevant color. Now in this case you can see the temperature is a little high and a little humid based on the readings and on the colour strip. The colour strip is quite useful if you find it hard to remember what constitutes good, fair or poor air quality, in this case PM2.5 for example. So this chart that I've created here lays out the meanings for the different colours. I haven't given numbers to these as they slightly differ between PM2.5 and PM10, although the colours do represent the same general levels listed here for both. When it comes to temperature, these ranges are a little bit arbitrary, especially when it comes to your own preferences, so they're just general guidelines. As for humidity, these are less down to personal levels as low or high humidity can cause a variety of issues, so it's best to keep within the suitable range of 40 to 60 degrees in this case. And finally on to carbon dioxide readings. The only advice I can give you is that keep whatever room you spend a lot of time in well ventilated. We should generally keep the LED strip in the green. It's unlikely you'll get to the crimson level, unless of course you like putting a plastic bag over your head. Hey, who am I to judge? 
Now for a quick PM 2.5 test, and in this case I simply lit a match to generate some smoke, which creates particulate matter. And as you can see here, the sensor reacts almost instantaneously. After the match was removed and I turned on a fan to dissipate the smoke, you can see the numbers start to go down again. Now obviously a test of this kind isn't exactly representative of general pollution as such, but just imagine being in the same room as a heavy smoker for example, and you may well see numbers approaching these levels. The air monitor light has a screensaver option which gives you two choices. You can even set the amount of time before the screensaver kicks in. The first option just shows you the different readings on a constant loop, so you get to see all of the data. This is my personal preference. The second option harks back to old DVD players or a Windows computer, with one specific reading bouncing slowly around the display. When it comes to the design of the display, for me personally this is a strong point, as not only are the numbers visible from a reasonable distance, but I actually like the design of the numerals themselves, which adds to the retro feel of the device. Onto app control, and in the Qingping app you get an overview of all of your Qingping devices. Now if you go in one level, you get a slightly more detailed overview, but in addition you get details on sensor readings over a 24 hour period, broken down into 15 minute segments, or a 30 day period split into days. The 30 day view shows the high and low points for each sensor in 24 hours. Whilst the app allows for overall settings, individual devices can be adjusted within themselves. So the good news for our US viewers is that you can set the readings to display Fahrenheit if you wish. If you have a few Qingping devices like I have, then you can choose which are shown. You can also set system-wide preferences to cover all of your devices, and you have a choice between using the Chinese or US air quality grading standards. These settings are also reflected in data displayed for your city if you add it, which can show additional readings for things like ozone, UV light, or even precipitation. Finally to the home app, and all five sensors are happily exposed to HomeKit. You find these sensors collected within the climate section at the top, which has a tile for air quality, which also shows PM2.5 and PM10 levels. There are also tiles for both temperature and humidity. All of these pages also show the battery levels and the charging status of the device. For some reason, the carbon dioxide sensor is collected in a different section, called alarm sensors, which I also have my carbon monoxide sensor. Here you get to see the current CO2 levels, as well as, once again, the battery levels. We finally hit the pros and cons section, and overall it's a solid thumbs up for this device, with only one minor con that isn't actually really related to HomeKit as such. So having five sensors is great, but to see a CO2 sensor is something a bit rarer, but also very welcome all the same. I absolutely adore the minimalist design, as well as the retro display, and due to its size it can fit in almost all spaces. Because it has a built-in battery, it also allows me to move it around without having to find a power point each time, which is very handy. And with all the minor details in the product itself and the Well Thought Out app, it really rounds out a very attractive product. Now the only minor con for me is that it can't be exposed to HomeKit if I use the Mi Home app which is a drag if you use Mi Home like myself, although for exclusively HomeKit users it's a non-issue. So that's a wrap for another week, but if you want to read our in-depth written review of this product, head over to HomeKit News via the link in the corner. If you've got any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments section below. But until our next video, stay safe and I'll see you soon.